Morning America continues now. Uh, and speaking of vacations, this is a great new book. We're going to show you some places that you may not have considered going to. Maybe you've never even heard of them. It's from the new book. It's called 1,000 Places to See before in, in the U.S. and Canada Before You Die. That's the name of the book. 1,000 places. I was flipping through it. That's that's actually me up in uh, Bend, <laughs> nice. Oregon last summer. Nice. Bend, Oregon, one of my favorite places. But we're going to tell you where to get away with the whole family, where to go just with your significant other. There's something for everybody in this book. It's a, it's a great read. And also, we've got this book, 1,000 Places to Visit in the USA and Canada before you die. Mm -hmm. It's the before you die part that bothers me a little bit. <laughs> but you're gonna show, we're gonna show you some amazing places in the book and then later we're gonna talk about some amazing places that you guys have been. I'm one well. of those people that'll be checking off all 1,000. I know you are. Because Kate's already been through the joke, whole right? book. Yeah. No, it's so <laughs> true. She's going. like, been there, wanna do that. By the way, you are in one of the 1,000 places to see, right? What's your name? Yes, Tammy Mothis Holbert. Well, not you, Tammy, but but actually oh, the place, yeah. the town that you're in. No, I I, I tricked you there because I was asking your name. But Arkansas, Stuttgart, Arkansas. Stuttgart, Arkansas. Stuttgart, Arkansas. Right. It's named after Stuttgart, Germany, All and right. it's in the 1,000 places to visit for, before you die. I can't wait for the <laughs> World Championship <laughs> Duck Calling Contest in Wings Over the Ferry Festival. And it festival. just keeps going. <laughs> There's more. There's a whole segment about the book, Stephanie. We'll, we'll do that. And coming up next here, oh, the places you'll go, as Dr. Sue said. A look at the must-see spots across the country when we come back to the GMA. Well, if you're one of the millions of Americans on vacation right now, enjoy yourself. But you might also be thinking about your next vacation because you still have 999 more places to see. And that's according to the map of a new book. It's called 1,000 Places to See in the USA and Canada Before You Die. It debuts this week at the top of the bestseller list, and the author, Patricia Schultz, joins me now. Good morning. Good morning. So you did 1,000 of the world, and now this is sort of the sequel, right? 1,000 yes. in the USA and Canada. How did you pick? <laughs> It was a tough job, really, because even though I wasn't doing the world, I was doing one continent and right. not the globe. I think I was more familiar with it. I was more proud of it. I wanted to do it justice. I understood just what I was up against. Yeah. So it was a tough call. And we tend to think, you know, sometimes we think overseas travel is so glamorous, but there are some great spots uh, right here millions, in, the, in the USA. Millions. Let's talk about some of them. Romantic getaways, first of all. You say one of the best is right off the coast of Georgia. Yes. You know, there are a number of islands off the coast of Georgia and North South Carolina, but this one is particularly special because it's privately owned. There's just one lodge to go to, which is kind of rustic, wonderful, that was, uh, it was purchased by a family in 1908, and at any given time, there are never more than 30 people on the island, and the wow. island is a kind of 10,000-acre oasis of pristine, unspoiled nature, and it's oh, just yeah. beautiful, and you can feel like you're the only couple on the island if you wander off. There's a seven-mile beach. There are mm. miles and miles of treks and, Wonderful. and hikes. It's Little St. Simon Island, it's called. Uh, and the next romantic spot out west, Colorado. Yeah, yeah. Um, right up against the Rocky Mountain National Park. So you have 400 acres of beautiful, beautiful national park. But this place is called the Romantic River Song. It's 30 acres. There's a mountain stream that runs through it. You can have massages set up alongside the mountain stream oh. or in front of a crackling fireplace <laughs> in your room, and the innkeepers will marry you. If oh, you're really? Satisfied. Oh, well, yes, then that's a little bit. to do such. <laughs> um, one more couple's trip. Uh, this might surprise people. It's, it's not the beach. It's the mountains. It's, well, it's the, the northern lights, the aurora borealis. Oh, sorry. This, okay. Alaska. Alaska. Yes. Not the beach or the mountains is what I meant to say. Yes, it's natural beauty, yeah. and it's a spectacular, phenomenal display of color that is not quite so easy to see. It's not predictable. Uh, you can stand and watch and wait, and unless nature kind of regales you with mm -hmm. it, you're not guaranteed of seeing it. We saw it up in Fairbanks towards the Arctic Circle, and it happens just between September and March when the skies are very dark and black, and it's uh, something awesome. I think it will stay with you for life yeah. if you see it. And you might not think because it's not warm, no. but it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and it's uh, one of nature's most beautiful displays, Absolutely. I think. Absolutely. So if you have kids, let's switch gears to yes. family-friendly vacations. A lot of options, and you start with one of my favorites, because I used to live there, Albuquerque, yeah. and the Balloon Fiesta. Yeah, I love the Four Corners area of America. And so this takes place in Albuquerque every October. And it's over 700 balloons that come from all over the world. It's the largest such rally of balloon people 
who come from all corners. And you have to love crowds because 80,000 right. to 100,000. And you, you have to get up early. Yes. Really early. <laughs> you have to get up. There's a dawn patrol at 5, and then this mass ascension at 7 when all of the balloons go up in waves so that all 700 of them fill the sky. It's spectacular. Wisconsin, a clown town, essentially? A clown town. It's the center of the circus world because the Ringling Brothers were from Wisconsin. And in the late 1800s, when they first set off, this was their home base until uh, the 1934, I believe, mm. when they went south to Florida. But there are 1550 vintage hand-painted cars that once traveled from wow. town to town in America. You can see how elephant trainers work. You can, uh, the kids can experience what it's like to run away for a day enjoying the circus. And uh, science camp kind of place, Kennedy Space Center, but yeah. I think grown-ups like it too. Oh, and grandparents. It's a kind of three-generation trip, I think. And it's just 50 miles from Orlando, so you have to do both because it's really an education. The visitor center has uh, 50 years of NASA projects. You see all of the original shuttles and rockets. If it's near a launch date, you can experience that as well. You can meet an, uh, uh, an ast astronaut. Mm. You can have lunch with an astronaut. Oh, there you go. Let's do one more real quick uh, for groups that want to travel together. You mentioned one right outside New York City. Yeah, the Mohonk Mountain House. It's my favorite. It's upstate in the Catskills along the Hudson River. Uh, 2,000 acres that butts up against 6,000 acres of preserve. Hiking, spa, incredible spa. Bring the girls, bring the guys, golf, great, great dining, a little bit of everything. A throwback to what it was like in the late 1800s. Oh, that's wonderful. Some such great ideas in this book. We've done six, I think. So you've got 994 <laughs> to read about in the book. And you can find out more about the 1,000 places on our website. That's at abcnews.com. And up next, we'll tell you where some of our favorite places are.